last part of this gospel is the most important. How much more will the Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Ultimately, that is what the Lord wants to form within our heart, is to not just ask for this and this and this, but to go to the deepest aspect of saying, Lord, give me yourself. Because the Holy Spirit, St. Augustine would say, is the gift of God. But he is a giver who gives the gift of himself. Not unlike how a spouse gives the gift of themselves in marriage. They're not just merely giving a ring, but they're giving their entire person to the other. And the Holy Spirit is the gift of love that's shared between the Father and the Son. And that gift is offered to us. And so God doesn't want to settle for just answering your requests. He wants to make this lifelong communion, this forever communion, which is ultimately what your heart is looking for. And so he's saying, ask, and you will receive. In other words, ask boldly. Ask for the gift of God himself, the gift of love given to us freely. We see that gift of love being poured out from the cross. And that's why St. Paul is so grieved at the Galatians today. You know, he even uses some pretty strong words. He starts, this is the word of the Lord, he's saying, oh stupid, Galatians. I remember my mom always saying, don't say stupid. But, you know, here, they were pretty dumb. And he's just so, he's just so exasperated. He's just like, you are so stupid. He even says that, he says, are you so stupid? And why is he saying this? He's saying, as if someone's bewitched you. You saw Jesus Christ publicly portrayed as crucified. Now the people in Galatia weren't necessarily there at Mount Calvary, but the way that St. Paul preached is he preached the passion of our Lord in such a way that they saw through the gift of the Spirit actually meant that God died for me. God loved me. He was willing to be on a cross. And for the ancient world, that meant so much more than us who sometimes sanitize the, the crucifix. But that was the ultimate symbol of torture, pain, misery. And people were terrified of it because it was the way the Roman Empire kept people in check, saying, if you mess with us, will do that to you. And that's why they would always have their crucified victims outside of the major cities, so that everyone, as they walk into the marketplace, would see these tortured men and women um, on the cross crying, please kill me, because I'm in so much pain. That's what the cross is. And so when the Holy Spirit was given to these Galatians, they didn't just hear these words of St. Paul, but they felt and experienced the depth of what God did for them. And that spirit that was given to them then gave them power to live differently, to not live from the works of the law in the sense of, I'm trying to just become holy by my own steam. I'm trying to forgive others. I'm trying to let go of resentment. I'm trying to do all these things just on my own because that never works. But when they experienced the Spirit, they started to let go of their former way of life, their former addictions, their former ways of thinking. But now, there's a group that came in after Paul that were saying, you really have to just do all these things like before. You have to go back to the way that you thought before. 
are starting to believe them. And so St. Paul is, again, very exasperated, saying, don't be so stupid. You've been given a gift. You asked for the Holy Spirit, and it was given to you. You asked for the very life of God to dwell within you. Why are you settling for something less? The one who supplies the Spirit, he's the one that wants to do mighty things through you. And so let's remind ourselves that we too have received the Spirit of God. In our baptism, the very life of God, the very Holy Spirit came into our little souls and started to grow and be nourished, to be fed with the body of our Lord. And then in confirmation, we were empowered by that Holy Spirit, something stirred and it called us to live differently, to love with the love of Christ. And yet, how many times do we forget that it's God who wants to work through us, and we kind of go back to, well, it's more comfortable just trying to do it myself. So the Lord is reminding us today, open our hearts, O Lord, to listen to the words of your Son, the word of his son today is ask for the Holy Spirit. He's already there, but the Holy Spirit throughout history wants to do a fresh anointing. He wants to stir maybe, uh, you know, that chocolate syrup that's at the bottom of the glass of milk. If it doesn't keep stirring, what happens? That chocolate just starts little by little starting to separate again. And so throughout our lives, we need to keep coming to the Lord, asking, knowing that the Lord wants to give us his spirit in a deeper way, in a fresher way, in a way that's able to take away fear, to love more vibrantly, to experience the happiness and joy that we're made for, to be able to use those charisms, those gifts of the Holy Spirit that have been given to us, to bring healing to others, to bring in his word. So let's ask for the gift of the Holy Spirit in a fresh,